Hey guys, uh, this is Chopadong back with the part two of the VIP uh, lineup building process that I promised you I would get out to you today. This is a really weird slate. Uh, we've got a little bit of time. We can kind of bounce around and build some lineups, but there's no real clear-cut top dog offense going up against a weaker defense, something we can really pick on. It's kind of a bunch of mediocre, fighting a bunch of mediocre. The one game that we might like off the top is the Toronto-Columbus game. But again, Columbus hasn't been going that great lately. Toronto's on the back end of a back-to-back -back travel night. It's, they came off of seven goals last night. It, it's a nice little letdown spot, honestly. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm not excited about any of this crap. I mean, they can, can, none of these teams are great. None of these teams excite me. It is what it is. Um, we talked about that a little bit on the first part. We talked about it a little bit with goalies. Um, if I was going to... Pick a goalie, one of these $8,000 dudes is about where I'd go. Throw Jake Allen in there just for the hell of it. Um, he's got some good numbers. Uh, Jones, fine. Bob, eh. I don't like the six over under. I'd rather stay with Jones in the five. But, you know, Jake Allen can throw a shutout out there. Who knows? These, these are kind of a crapshoot. Um, like I said before, the $100 doesn't matter much. If you're going to go anywhere, you're going to drop all the way down to Mrazek at 7100 But now what we're going to look at is our average salary of about 5000 left over. And we're going to target an offense. You can go immediately with punts and start working on bringing your bringing your average salary up. See, I just got it to six thousand. Uh, if you have a couple of deep value picks that you like, or you can immediately start with your studs like Burns and Trocheck, and then try and work around that. Now you're down to forty-five hundred. You're going to need some value at some point. What, one of the things that I like to do, I, I do always throw in my goalie first, but because he's the most expensive piece I take that I have to take. Um, let's pick an offense tonight. Let's say that we want to stick in here as much as we can and we don't have faith in Toronto. We want to roll with Columbus. Um, I can stack a couple of things. Now, like I said before, in tournaments, we may stack the whole line. In cash, we may take a couple pieces of a couple lines or one line with the power play on it. Um, if I wanted to... I would probably take Dubinsky and maybe Saad here. I would check their game logs and make sure, or I might take Atkinson and Feligno. Feligno, whatever. I might do something like that where I'm kind of spreading out. For I'm looking for the value and looking for a little bit of cheap stuff, some good source of production. I don't need to start with my studs yet. So there's 4,300 for Dubinsky, 5,600 for Saad. It's not terrible. I don't like uh, George Saad that much, so I'm not going to probably head his way. So let's look at... Sad and Dubinsky first, just to kind of start there and get our piece of that primary game that we want, you know, for mediocre exposure to it. The next thing I'm going to do is maybe pick a secondary offense. Um, if I don't find somebody that I really, really like down here, well, Jones. My, you know, shorter slate might take Jones as, um, as the other defender. Okay, now I've got three. And they correlate fairly well, being that Jones is on the power play two as well. So you've got the two, the two, the two, and you've got two lines covered, and you've got a top line defenseman covered. So any of the goals that come out of the predictable scoring off the top couple of lines, you're probably getting a piece of it. Um, not guaranteed, but you're probably getting a piece of it. That spreads you out for cash. It builds your floor. It wrecks your ceiling a little bit, but it builds your floor. Um, the next thing I might do is pick a secondary offense. Let's say I like Florida. Florida's a little different structure. Florida has all of their power play guys on the same scoring lines. They just roll them. Um, this one is really hard because I, I think Trocek's a stud, and he's definitely somebody who's on my radar uh, tonight. And the reason why, if you look into his um, numbers, is he's running at a, like five points per game over his last 10 for 6,200. That's a great price. And 10, 4, 3, doesn't have a bad game too terribly often. 1.5, and, and then 11, 5, 5, 1, then a 4, then a 7. So, I mean, he's very consistent. He's a good cash game play. If I ran him in there, I'm going to look at now who can I maybe uh, pair him up with. Trocek's on the 2, so i got to get Jokinen or Riley Smith. My problem is when I look at a Jokinen... I'm going to see some inconsistency. Out of the 4,000, I'm only getting about 2.5 points on average. He's played well lately, so I might run with that. But he's got some crap in there, and he's a little bit up and down. If I looked at a different guy, and this is one of the times I might get off of this, if I run up to Huberdu here, Huberdu, he's back in the lineup. 
after, you know, he's played a couple of games, so he's not fresh off of whatever caused him to miss a few games. He's scoring six points per game on average for $5,000. I mean, that's huge. Nine and a half and a three in his last two games. And then you go back a week, and he's got a six. In his last three games, the dude's been money. So I'll spread out in cash and lose the correlation just to grab the recency in these guys when I see a situation like that. So I'm starting to build it in. Now I've got to go for some value here because 5000 isn't that much uh, uh, savings uh, or isn't that much left over for one, two, three spots. I'd almost like a little bit more flexibility. So if I'm going to go dig in cheap, probably look for that, that other defenseman. And Yandel's under 5,000. Ekbald's under 5,000. Uh, Vlasic's always a, is usually kind of decent. Uh, Brody's even cheaper. I'm looking for a defenseman on a power play unit. Um, Zetasev is not bad. Pro, Pro, Provorov is not bad. So if I want to compare a couple of these guys, um, I've already seen Zetasev and Provorov. They're pretty good. Let's check Vlasic and let's check Brody really quick just to see if we're not getting, you know, passing up a pretty darn good thing. If I run in 2.2 for 3,800 is not, you know, what's that, about half, one, one and a half. This is crap. His last three games sucked. That nine is like a big game and probably an outlier for him. Brody's out. If I look at Vlasic, now I'm going to see three for four. That's 75%. That's pretty good. I usually like two-thirds. So three for, you know, $4,000 is pretty solid. If I run down here, and open up that game log. Three, two, two, three and a half. Very consistent. One and a half is a bad game, but four, one, two and a half, five, five. For cheap, you know, I've got Vlasic in there now at 4100 That's going to bump me back up. i got two guys for $4,400. Now, at this point, I might run down. I need a wing and a utility. So let's start with the wing first. Let's roll down to around the 5400 and Let's see who's down in this area. Uh, Nylander gets us into Toronto. Mantha gets us into Detroit. Um, I can take probably both of them, honestly, without much of a problem. And I might even be able to grab a Marlowe. So we're sitting in a pretty good spot where we can choose, pick and choose. That's one way to build a lineup. Kind of start with your stacks and then kind of fill in as you go. But we're always monitoring this if we want to stay in more of a balanced fashion. Let's say that we want to go a different way. Let's go points per production. Our top two guys over the last four weeks, our top two guys on the slate right now, are Burns and Huberdu. Uh, I'm personally a Trocheck guy. So let's say that I wanted to go Trocheck and Burns, since Huberdu doesn't correlate very well with Trocheck. So I throw in Trocheck. I keep the goalie, start with the goalie, and then now Burns. And now let's see what I have to do. Let's see how that works. 4,500. I need to pretty much start diving for some value right away. Remember that punt that I told you about, Payarvi in St. Louis? If we throw him in there, we're already up to 5,000. We can kind of start working with that. Let's say we wanted to throw our other defenseman in there, either in Toronto with Zeta Sev. Um, I don't really want to run Vlasic, although it'd be fine. I mean, if Burns gets six points, Vlasic gets four or five points. What the hell do I care? But let's spread it out just in case, you know, the weird thing happens like in hockey and San Jose gets shut out tonight. Let's run... Uh, some of the cheaper defensemen in there. So Zeta said, let's t let's take Provorov, since I know he's in an okay spot. Now I'm under, I'm staying under this as much as I can. You're going to see that I'm going to have a whole bunch of four thousand dollar players, or if I can't find a decent punt, I'm going to end up, you know, kind of sacrificing my upside. If I wanted to find, here's another way to do this. If I run down here and I start looking for cheap guys, who's the first cheap guy I come across? Payarvi. Um, scrolling down here, trying to get as low, probably down into the threes, if I can. Levo, Matheson, you know, that's okay. Um, say I threw PRV in there and just punted a wing spot. No problem. I'm back up over 5,000. I can work with that. I'm trying to look at the offenses that I'm exposed to. I've got Florida in a spot, San Jose in a spot, Philly in a spot. Uh, St. Louis in a spot. Now I can start looking around. Uh, I've got a Florida. I've got a little Florida exposure. I don't really concerned about Calgary, to be honest with you. Got some San Jose. Got some Florida. Might pick up a little Columbus, a little Toronto. So if I'm looking for some cheap 5K guys in those offenses, uh, Dubinsky. 
let's see, Dubinsky's probably a good one to take out of here. Could take Seth Jones as a third defenseman, but I usually don't like doing that. They don't have the upside. Um, over here, Nylander, Kadri, Bozak. You know, we've got options to play with. So let's say that I took Dubinsky, threw him in there, and let's say I took Kadri. Now I've got those. I've got that game. I've got um, this is going to turn into one-offs, really. Um, but that's a way to go on a night like tonight where it's all spread out. Uh, Florida, Columbus, St. Louis, San Jose, Philly, Toronto. So really, now what two offenses am I maybe most thrilled with? If I wanted to grab a Detroit guy, I could. But you got to hit all those guys, and you're not going to get any help um, where you're stacking and, and doubling up the production at this point. So it's a little bit tougher to to, to hit this way, but. We can give it a shot. Um, if I wanted to stay with Columbus, what's my average salary? 5000 still. If I wanted to stay with Columbus, who's down around the 5000 mark? Saad. Gosh, it's kind of tough. Um, if I went back to Florida or San Jose, I can grab Marlo. Let's grab Marlo. Where does that leave me? 4,600 for a wing. I like to try and keep this out of here. I like to. I ran three centers right off the bat, but because this pins me into picking a wing. Uh, Boone Jenner, bang. If you look at his game log, Boone is at three and 4,600. So and two and a half, seven, two, three. Not going to kill you in cash. Bunch of twos, some fives. Not going to kill you in cash. Boone also correlates. Here's on the top line here with Dubinsky. So Boone Jenner correlates with Dubinsky. So now you've got a pretty well correlated you know, line in a couple of spots and a whole bunch of one-offs. That's a way to spread out for cash. That's not going to do you very good in a tournament. If you wanted to build a tournament lineup, you're definitely going to have to start stacking an offense like I told you about before. And you might even think about a contrarian way. Remember we said that uh, St. Louis has won four in a row and Detroit's lost four in a row, so what we might do in this case is we slide down to the goalie and we go take uh, Mrazek because if St. Louis gets beat up, then it was going to be at the hands of Detroit. Where'd Mrazek go? There he is. And now we're going to go diving into who do, who's doing the damage here. Uh, if I wanted to spread out, I could probably take Zetterberg and Mantha, but let's load that power play up and spread out a little bit. Let's take Nielsen with him. Zetterberg, Mantha, and Nielsen. Zetterberg, Mantha, Nielsen. Got to spell it right. Boom, now we're loaded there. Let's take Mike Green. Let's really go balls to the wall. Now I've got the power play loaded. I've got the ones, and I've got the, the D1. Well, I used to. Well, he's on the two, but he used to be on the one. Anyway, you can see where I'm going, and now I'm going to fill in. Let's say I want to spread out a little bit, um, go down into, say, Florida, and take uh, Huberdu, you know, and, and something else. I, I can go one-offs from here. I can stack another game if I really want to pin it and try and be right. This is just kind of how we go about building lineups. Uh, it, you're kind of trying to think, what do you think is going to happen? What What's the slate offering me in, as far as talent? Is it focused? to where I have to kind of stack teams? Is it, is it spread out and mediocre where I don't really know where it's coming from? And you're kind of going to play that a little bit as you go. Um, you can start with uh, your studs first and then go look at your average salary and start digging for a deep value. You can start with some of the value that you see when you're looking over the slate and plug that in first, like a Provorov or somebody like that, and then start building up from there, which is the way I like to do it. You want to save that utility spot for last, honestly, if you can because you're trying to give yourself the most flexibility uh, on a slate. So at 5,700, um, I can pin myself with Pavelski and then have to dive deep with uh, with a little bit of value. And I'm really just grabbing stuff here at this point, just to show you something before I run out of time. Uh, let's go down and grab Brody. Now look, with my utility, I've got 7,200. Had I put a third center in that spot, now look, 6,400, but it has to be a D guy. I'd rather let it be the utility. So anyway, those are just some quick tips for you. We'll see you guys around.